everybody and welcome to a mod review slash tutorial I'll be doing and the mod that I'm going to be showing you guys today is Tinker's Construct. Now I discovered this mod a couple days ago. I, I've seen it played for a little while but I decided to give it a try myself and this is probably my favorite mod in Minecraft. It incorporates a bunch of different tools that you can create and stuff like that. So we're going to go over some of the basics on how to do that. So, when you create a new world, you're going to spawn with a materials and you book. So let's go ahead and open that up. And basically, it's going to give you, show you what you need to start out. Like some, uh, some crafting recipes, so blank pattern, stencil table, part crafter, pattern chest, tool station, tool forge. And then the different versions of materials and you, and then the mighty smelting. So we're going to go over these, uh, we're going to go over how to craft each and every one of these and how you can uh, make patterns. So we're going to need a couple of blank patterns first. So let's go ahead to our crafting table here. And we're going to need a couple at least. Let's make 10. 10's a, 10's a good number. All right, and then we're going to need one of these, a stencil table. And let's see, I need a thing of wood. Where is it? There it is. Got it. All right, so we're going to need one of these. We got a part builder. We need to make a chest. And we have a pattern chest. And now we need the actual tool station itself. Crafting station, tool station. Huh, interesting. Okay, so let's get all this in our inventory here. All right, so I'm going to put the stencil table down there. I'm going to put the pattern chest and the part builder there. And we'll have the tool station over here. So we have all of our all of our tables that we need for right now. Now I'm going to bring these blank patterns. All right. So now we're going to talk about patterns. Now there's many different types of patterns you can use and at this point it would spawn in this book here, the materials in you number 2. And it will show you all the different types of patterns. There's you can pickaxe head, shovel head, and you can just scroll through here, take a look at each different type of tool and what you would need to craft that tool. So we're going to start basic and we're going to go with a pickaxe. So we need to go to the stencil table. We'll put a blank pattern in. And you go hit next and previous pattern and you look for the pickaxe head pattern. That's which material cost is one. So if I were to make... If I were to try and make a cast, I would need to use at least one material in order to make it. Alright, so we're going to need that. Now, I think, let me look in here again. We need a tool binding for the pickaxe. So we're going to go in here, take our blank pattern, and look for the tool binding pattern, which is this one right here. So we'll take that, and then for our third part, we can just use a stick which I struggled to figure out for the longest time, I don't know why. But, now, we need to go to the part builder, we'll put our pickaxe head in there, and we'll take a cobble, piece of cobblestone, and we have a stone pickaxe head now. And now we have a tool binding pattern, that we'll put in there, and since it's only .5, it's going to give us a stone binding and a stone shard. So now if I put the stone shard in there, it can give us another stone binding because that's considered half a piece of cobblestone. But we only need the one right now. So I'm going to put these patterns back in the chest for right now. Now, tool station. Let's see. Should be able to build a stone, a pickaxe that's stone bound. So, that's how you simply create tools in Tinker's Construct, just like that. 
And I mean, there's a bunch of different patterns you can do. And you can make these out of iron. You can make these out of all sorts of different metals. They have new metals that are incorporated into the game, like cobalt, aluminum, and stuff like that. So, uh, so the next part here, we're going to talk about the smeltery, which is how we're going to make like an iron pick or an iron hammer. And I'll go over how to make the, uh, the iron hammer here. So we'll do that. All right, now we're going to learn how to create a smeltery and then learn how to make casts so that we can make these awesome tools such as the hammer. So first we're going to need seared bricks. Now in order to make that, we're going to have to combine gravel, clay, and sand. I don't think there's any particular order, but you'll get grout. Now you're going to need a lot of this because when you take the grout and you smelt it, it's going to give you not one seared, it's going to give you a seared brick. And you need four seared bricks to make a block like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's very resource consuming, but in the end it's going to be worth it. So you're going to, you would need to find a lot of clay, a lot of gravel, and a lot of sand. So you would take this, put it in a pattern of four, and you would get seared brick like that. So once you take once you get seared brick, you're gonna want to come over here and lay out a three by three pattern for the bottom of your smeltery. Now the reason you have to use seared brick is because there's going to be a lot of heat and you use anything else it's just not going to end well. I don't even think you can use anything else. So if we look in the uh, the mighty smelting book you'll see all the recipes you need and this is what you would need for a smelter. You would need one smeltery controller, one seared tank, nine seared bricks, any combination of ten seared bricks, seared tanks or drains, one faucet, and one casting table. So I have all these in the box here and we're going to assemble this this smeltery. All right, so we have the smeltery controller here. We're going to place that down there. We have a seared tank. We're going to place that next to it and we're going to have the smeltery drain here. Now we put the faucet on the drain and we have the casting table set below it. So when we hit the faucet it's going to pour out into here and make a cast. Now, we just need to finish off the sides before this will turn on, so I'm going to put everything back here, like so. And I'll get to this in a minute, but basically what that can do, what the casting basin can do is, if you have that instead of the, uh, the casting table, it, depending on how many ingots you have left in here, it'll just make blocks of whatever of whatever is in there. So if I have nine ingots of gold left over and I want to empty it and put something else in there, I can do that. I can just empty it into the basin like that. So we're going to take our seared bricks and finish surrounding this. Now if you do this correctly, that should light up. And if we right click that, we have nine open spaces to put, to put items in. Now if you have it taller like this one here, it will allow for more spaces to put materials such as iron and gold. But right now we need to add fuel because there is no fuel in it. So we're going to take our bucket of lava and we're going to put just three buckets. That, that'll that simulate three buckets of lava and it gives us a little bit of fuel. Okay, so now that we have the fuel that we need, we need something to make a cast and so we need gold so we're gonna take some gold ore here and actually what I'm gonna do quick is I'm gonna make this one higher so we can fit a couple more gold in here and that way we'll have plenty to go around alright so how to put how you put gold in here is you right click on the controller and you can either click and drag, you can shift click, or do whatever, and it'll fill up every space and it'll, it's going to start smelting the gold. And what that's going to do is make it into a liquefied molten gold. 
You can see right now there's they're just regular gold ore blocks. It basically also doubles your ore output, which is kind of nice. So that's going to change into molten gold here relatively shortly. And drum roll, please. You can do it, buddy. I believe in you. There we go. Okay. So we have molten gold right there. And if I look in here, it shows the tank level and it says we have 36 ingots. Now, so let's say if I let's say we wanted to make a hammer. We need to make the casting first. I have the the patterns all set. I just need to use the cobblestone to make the each of the individual parts. So we're going to take the hammerhead, make one of those. We're going to just place that in the pattern chest. We need a tough tool rod pattern. Make a stone tough tool rod. Put that in the chest. And we need a large plate pattern. And you only need one of each for these because once you make a gold cast, you'll be, you'll be okay. So now that we have that, now, here's how you make your gold casts. So you have the gold in the smeltery. You're going to take your stone hammerhead right click onto the casting table and now that is there and is ready to be cast so you're gonna right click on the faucet and it's going to pour into the casting table and BAM you have your gold cast your hammerhead cast now you're gonna do this for each of your items and now that uh, it's gonna take a couple ingots alright we have a large plate cast and we need a tough tool cast tough tool rod cast alright so now we have each of these casts set up now if you don't have multiple smelteries there's a way you can like actually drain this and then save your gold for later which I can actually show you right now so basically we'll take our casting bin how much gold we have 30 ingots left we're gonna take that out and we're just gonna pour that into there and it's going to take the ingots out and basically form a gold block. Which can be later used for more fuel again. And eventually it will change into a gold block. Block of gold. Alright, we got 21 ingots yet. So we'll just drain that out. And basically what we want to do is we want to get to where we can smelt iron. This is molten iron right now. And there's a good amount of ingots in there. But basically, if you were to only have one of these smelteries, you would have to drain everything out because you don't really want to waste your resources. All right, we can make one more gold block. And I don't know if there's actually a way to... Um, there actually might be a way to make ingots, which uh, I should look into, actually, because I have three ingots left. So... Um, there might be an ingot pattern somewhere in there. But anyway, let's uh place our something I don't even have. <laughs> anyway, no, let's place our casting table back down here. Alright, we'll put our block of gold away and stuff. So now we have our smeltery of molten iron right here. As you can see it looks rather lovely. Now we wanna make we wanna cast our items. So we need a hammerhead, so we're gonna place our cast there. Right click on the faucet again so that the molten iron would come out and go into the cast. It's going to sit for a second and bam, we have an iron hammerhead. And let's see, let's look at the materials in you to make sure we're crafting this correctly. So we need a hammerhead, two large plates, and a tough rod. Okay, so we need two of these large plates. So we'll fill these up quickly. I don't really, is there a, is there a pattern for an ingot? Because that would be so much helpful. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that after this, but this is basically how you would craft your, your new tools and, and stuff like that. And now we need a tough tool rod cast which won't take up many ingots at all. 
and we have all the materials we need now to craft our our hammer now if we go to the tool station here there's no hammer icon over here so what we need for that is we need a tool forge which is for the tier 2 tools so we're actually going to need a good amount of iron so let me get our casting basin and let's start pouring out iron and I have three seared bricks already in my inventory so we just need the four iron blocks now before we can before we can uh, craft the uh, the tool forge oh so yeah this mod is I played around with it for about five hours I mean that's that's about how long it took me to figure it out but this is a really enjoyable mod I really like this mod a lot I highly recommend it if to put it in your in your world of mods if you have one and like this stuff too you can make clear glass so basically you just smelt the glass and then you make it into clear glass blocks it's it's pretty cool okay so we need one more block of iron here and this is very like very uh, takes a lot of resources to uh, to make all of this alright so now that we have all the materials we need there I think we actually need Hold on, I think we need, we need a tool station actually, okay, so we're going to actually just, or not, alright, <laughs> I'll find one, alright, here's a tool station, alright, so we have a tool station, I'll put that one down, alright, so we need four iron blocks, three seared bricks, and a tool station, we have a tool forge now. So now we are going to be able to craft our hammer. So now we're going to right click and now we have a bunch more options for tool crafting. So we're going to find the hammer. And we have two large plates. We have an iron tough tool rod. And we have a hammerhead. We can also name this whatever we want. So I'm just going to go name it. hammer time. We now have a hammer. Now before I use the hammer I want to show you a couple things that you can actually add on to your hammer. So you can add on lapis, diamond, and redstone. These three components will upgrade your hammer in such a way where diamond you can actually mine obsidian. Before this you can only mine up to redstone this you will be able to mine obsidian so you add that redstone adds haste so you'll be able to mine quicker and thankfully you can use blocks and we'll add just the, the final five there and then lapis gives you luck which I believe has something to do with looting or fortune so we're just going to add a bunch of that. This thing is so awesome. The only thing is you just can't let it break and you can repair it with iron ingots. Which is rather nice. So now it's got fortune one on it. We're just going to go all the way because we can. Because we can. It's got fortune too now. <laughs> and like, for some reason now, like. Oh, alright, we made it. Alright, so. Now that we've like fully decked out our hammer, we have fortune three on it. Now, this is what the hammer does. Basically, if you aim at this middle block, holy cow. Um, let me just change my game mode. 
All right, so now you you just mine that, and it's gonna mine up a three by three square, which is pretty cool. Makes mining really really simple and a lot of fun now. The only thing you gotta watch for is the durability. But this is probably my favorite tool now in Minecraft to use. It's a lot of fun and just pretty awesome in general. Now there is a way to make it so that you have uh, you have an obsidian tough tool rod which adds more it has reinforced three instead of reinforced one. Basically you would just have to smelt the obsidian and then make that into your uh, tough tool rod. So those are your that's your basic tutorial on Tinker's Construct. I'm There's a ton more that I think that I haven't even tried to explore yet. This is just what I know. And I hope this has helped you out and that you'll be able to craft your hammers and then go mining on an epic adventure and just have a lot of fun with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you later.